Hey everybody, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is going to be five mandatory Blender camera animation tips. Let's get started. So here's the scene and basically what this is is the project tutorial series that I did before on creating epic text in Blender and you can check that out below in the video description. It's a really cool tutorial series that can show you how to make something that's like this uh, text right here. I'll also have this available on the Gumroad as a project file. So I'll link that below as well. So if you want, you can just download it and you can see all the things that I'm talking about. But basically we have this very basic animation here, but for a lot of people, this is very difficult to do this sort of simple animation. They end up having a lot of problems. And that's because often what people do is they will add a camera like this right here. And let's say that they go, okay, let's, make it to where the camera is set like this and they'll go in and they will insert keyframes for their location and the rotation there. And then they'll go to a later frame. They will move the camera somewhere else like this and they will right click to set their keyframes and they have something that's like this. And that may work for some people, you know, if, if that's what you wanna do, that may work, but you'll find that, you know, right in here, it falls off your frame. So then they will rotate it and maybe move it out and then set some new keyframes. And they end up having to add a whole bunch of keyframes in between. And they don't really get a nice and uh, comfortable animation that is easy to control. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is that you'll want to basically set up a path animation instead of controlling where it is on those individual keyframes. So all that you really have to do is if you add a curve, it could be any of these curves. I have the extra curves on, that's why you see all this stuff here. But if you just select a circle or a bezier, you can create a curve and then take your camera, make sure that the camera doesn't have any location information or rotation information on it. Just take that camera, go to your object constraints right here, and then add this follow path animation and select your camera track as the target and then you will have it set up to be on this path right here. And then what we can do is you can change this offset to then change where it is located on that path. And you can set keyframes right here instead of having to manually move this around and change the rotation and everything and then cause a whole bunch of headache. What we'll also need to do here is create a track to target. Okay, so if we go in here and we add a track to constraint and you create an empty, so if we go shift A, empty, planes with axes, you can then rename that to your camera target, select your camera, and then select as the target your camera target or your focus object or whatever you wanna call it. And then your camera will be tracking that object itself. And you can see here that I actually set an animation on that target to keep my object in the middle of the frame. So having a constraint where you actually have your camera pointed at an object instead of having to animate the keyframe or animate your camera itself with rotations and everything, you just set it to look at a target and then you can move that target wherever you want. So if I take this and I move it all around, you can see that it tracks it no matter what and it never messes up my keyframes for my camera. The next thing I wanna show you is that if we go over to your camera properties here and we turn on the overlay and I go to a solid view, if we go down the list here, you can see here that it says, let me just do this here, viewport display, composition guides, thirds. I have thirds selected here. And if we go up, you can see that I have also safe areas turned on. So you can see for title safe zones or anything like that, if you're going to composite this or put it into any other sort of editing software or anything like that, you can see the safe areas and you can also use the composition guides right here to help keep your object in the middle of the frame. And if I go to, let's say right in here, you can see that on the left side here and on the right side, it stays right in the middle of the frame. And if you don't find that that is happening, you can always go back into your curve and edit it by moving the handles to keep the center positions of your animation where the camera can keep that object nice and centered. So for example, like that there, I can just scale that up a little bit and you can see that it kind of pushes the camera away. Very, very helpful to use those overlays. The next thing that I want to show you here has to do with the curve editor. And if we go in here 
and we go to the graph editor, you can see that we have a whole bunch of curves here. And if you select on the points right down here where your animations are or your animation keyframes are, you can see that I have these set up as Bezier handles, which you can then change in the interpolation and the handle type here. You can sort of like change some of this stuff. But basically what I have here is I have a curve set instead of it being a linear movement, which would have a straight line from this keyframe to the other, which sometimes you might want. But the S curve or the curved animation basically will start and stop in a more gradual way instead of it being an abrupt start and end. So you'll want to adjust your animation keyframes inside of the curve editor to make sure that you are really controlling how smooth your animation is from beginning to end. So the last thing I'll show you, which you probably have noticed, is that I have a keyframe for the start and the stopping point, and then I have some other keyframes on the either uh, ends of those keyframes there. So basically, in real life, if you had a movement like this, you'd probably use what's called a jib arm, which basically looks something like this. It's basically a pulley system. Let me try and see if I can get this a little bit bigger. You can see it's a pulley system with a camera, and a person will basically be on one side, and they will move the camera in a big arc or something like that to make a nice sweeping uh, fluid motion with the camera, which I actually used to do when I worked in TV. I was a jib operator, so I do know how these things work. And basically what these do is they provide a really cool, uh, smooth animation from one end to another, and you get this nice, cool sweeping shot. Now, the problem is that if you have a digital program here, oftentimes if I delete this keyframe here and I delete this keyframe here, and I'm actually gonna set these just to exaggerate. I'm going to interpolate these as linear, okay? So you can see that it's now a linear motion from beginning to end. And if we take a look and observe here, I'm actually gonna take this and I'll make this a little bit easier to see, okay? So we'll do like this. And if I hit animation here or I just press play, you can see that as the camera moves, it will sort of start and stop in this very awkward way. Now, in the beginning of the shot, you can see that there is some motion. If I go back here and we just keep playing it back and forth, you can see that there is some motion. Boom. But when the camera does start actually animating, there's this weird jerkiness to it. Now, changing these to a Bezier handle will help. So if we select those and then change that to a Bezier, you can see that it creates this nice little S curve here. And when we hit play, you can see that it starts and it will stop right like that in a sort of like more soft and fluid motion instead of it being, you know, so obvious and jarring. But the problem is that it still has a little bit of unnaturalness to it because it starts and stops in a very perfect way. And what we really need is some imperfection for it to look more perfect. What I mean is that in CGI, everything is so controlling. Uh, at least we can control everything, that we can have these perfectly fluid shots with a start and stop at exactly where we want it. But in real life, that's not really how it works. You have to have some sort of uh, movement in the beginning of the shot and at the end of the shot where it gets set to where it needs to be for the final position. And there's always just a little bit of rocking or movement that happens. So if I just undo here and go back to where I was to begin with, with my extra keyframes, you can see that this keyframe here and this keyframe way over here you can see that that is made to sort of slow this down and sort of set it to be more accurate to what you would actually do if you actually had your hands on a jib arm. You would have a person start somewhere like this where they might just be a little bit further back just to, to begin their movement and then they start right here. And then when they stop, they might stop it, but it wouldn't be just stopping the camera immediately. It would just sort of uh, fizzle out to where there's a slight movement at the very, very end, and then maybe rock back to the final position at the very end of the shot. So in general, what you'll want to do after you've set your Bezier handles and you have your move exactly where you want it, add a keyframe before and at the end, just to soften up your animation to make it feel a little bit more lifelike and realistic. So if you follow these fairly simple steps, you should end up with a very nice, fluid moving and more realistic feeling animation for your camera. Thanks so much everybody for watching. Hopefully you learned something. As always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below uh, and let me know if you ran into any issues with this or if it was hard to follow. You can also jump on the Discord if you'd like to ask questions or just collaborate with other artists or talk to me. 
And again, as always, thanks so much to my patrons. You guys are awesome and help to keep me motivated to keep making awesome tutorials like this. Thanks so much, and I will see you next time on DJ Tutorials.